It's an exciting day for a high school League of Legends, and I've got great news for you, Matt. What's that, TJ? We, we got some high school League of Legends. Whoa! That is good news. Uh, I was not expecting we would have high school League of Legends in a high school League of Legends state finals tournament, but okay. you know what? Happy to be surprised. Um, that's a little worrying, to be honest. The Play vs. Fall 2020 High School Championship Tournament has been going on for like four days at this point. Matt and Iberia Clint Daniel. Yeah, well, Thomas Esports TJ James. Uh huh. Uh, I've just been vibing along. And I've been realizing, you know, I thought because the quality of games was so high, I thought it was watching the LCS. Uh, turns out instead it was just state championships at high school. It's not, a, it's not really a compliment. The parents like the LCS. Oh, uh, yeah. My bad, guys. Sorry. My apologies go out to the high school League of Legends. What? And if you're wondering how the state final in Georgia will play out, we haven't we haven't changed anything up. It's the same as the previous days. Best of three series on Summoner's Rift. Two teams of five standard uh, rules apply. It is one of our 29 state and regional finals. The last time we did this, Matt, you had profoundly nothing to say when I ended the sentence. Go. <laughs> I have something to say now because I've been yeah. waiting the entire tournament to just see like Delaware or somewhere close to me mentioned. I don't think I'm ever going to see it. I don't think Delaware Do we exists. have a state final for Delaware? I don't know. I don't have a list anywhere in front of me of all the... I feel like I have this somewhere. I've... Let me know, TJ. Oh, yeah, I, can't, really I can't find it quickly. Uh, leave oh, it okay. All right. Producer Pine, maybe you could check in on that once we get into game. We'll offload yeah, the work. That'd be cool. Uh, Producer Pine is just full of our full of our nonsense by now and will not be following up on that. Uh, we are into game. It is, of course, Lambert versus Northview, and our teams are beginning their draft. It is going to be a Blitzcrank, an Ivern, and a Cled band in the most wild band phase I've seen in a while. Ivern's eyes are really kind of creepy. Yeah, I was thinking about these, this the other day. Ivern mm -hmm. is really kind of cute in the top down. Mm -hmm. But if you ever get any art that has a different perspective on him, he's kind of a Guillermo del Toro monster. Yeah, and he's like also lore-wise a monster. Um, He was like a mass murderer and then stopped being one. <laughs> and then the he's forest like was basketball. like... Aha! Uh -huh, you are the forest monster now. And he was like, you know what? I'll only mass murder people who mess with the forest. Um, That's so... actually the story of the Lorax as well. <laughs> we'll kick <laughs> things off with a gin pick over on the Lambert side as Northview follow through with a Thresh and Kha'Zix. Okay, Jin, fairly standard. This entire draft so far really standard. Um, excited to see more Kha'Zix. We haven't seen it find a whole lot of success so far. We're not standard anymore, Matt. We're breaking the standards. We got an Urgot coming through for Lambert. Ooh. And a Poppy to follow up. You can't stop the Longhorns. Mm. Yeah, I know Bane in response to that as well. Maybe someone should stop them. I don't know. This is looking scary. Uh, so Poppy and Urgot, one of these two is going into the jungle. I suspect it will be the Poppy. Um, but I haven't seen Urgot in a long time, TJ. So, Urgot holds a special place in my heart because he was the first champion I ever played once I started learning League of Legends. Really? Um, I don't actually think I own him on the NA server, but I was in the EU server at the time, so... Shout out to my, like, 200 games on Urgot on EU West. <laughs> when was this? When uh, was this? When you were casting the LPL. Hmm, okay, was this when you were doing the... European League for Valor series? Yeah, I was working in Leicester. Okay. And I didn't know I was... you I didn't know you played League during that time. I thought it was just all AOV I all was the time. It up. Yeah. Oh. Glad to have you in here. My, in Glad you stopped playing Urgot. You know what? Honestly, I just wanted to be able to support you while you're casting the LPL. I just wanted to be able to tune in and know what <laughs> mm -hmm. was going on. Uh -huh. Scion it, on the opposite side will be picked up by Northview as they want something to play up in the top lane, and we're going to get a Victor mid, a Karma support, to close out the Lambert draft. That does indeed confirm that either the Poppy or the Urgot will have to be in jungle. Unless we're going wilder than that. 
Mm. Karma Jungle. Karma Jungle. Oh, Karma Jungle was a thing at one point, TJ. Mm -hmm. I know you're joking, but it was a thing. Uh, season 3, Diamond Prox brought it up. It was bad, but he got it to work, so shout-outs to him. I was excited because my image froze in exactly the same place for at least, like, 10 seconds, and it was, like, a really good stealth prep. Uh, we complete our draft with a Fizz in mid for Northview. Um, I think... Poppy Jungle. Mm. I think I am all in on Lambert, despite their draft being a little wild. Uh, it is full assassin for Northview. There isn't really, like, a... I, I don't believe they have a central theme. Um... They will be able to get onto this Victor and Jin pretty easily in theory, but if Urgot and Poppy are playing well, it's going to be very difficult to get past that front line, even as Kha'Zix, even as Fizz. And if, again, that front line holds, then you have so much damage that comes through in the mid late game. There's nobody aside from the Urgot who can take those Jin shots. I think the only way I, I am full all-in on the Urgot train is totally Unitado. Urgot. Needs to go crack and slayer. It's not good. It's not the best mythic on him whatsoever. But it's so funny, TJ, because the W fires so many auto attacks so quickly. You're just doing a bunch of bolts of true damage. It's oh really God. funny. I hadn't thought about that, but that is that does sound messed up. Uh, let's head into game. Hopefully, they won't do that. Although it would be entertaining. I want to see a big beefy or a god boy. Yeah, I think. Uh... Most of what you're going to be seeing from Urgots in terms of Mythic is probably something like uh, Divine Who's Sunder. Going cull? Hmm. Cull that start makes sense. for the Urgot. That makes sense. I mean, you're not going to get exactly poked out by the Scion. You're not going to be getting into a ton of engages early on. So... Go Chem Tank. <laughs> I think that's a little bit too on the nose, considering you're playing Urgot. Well, first of all... I hadn't thought about that, but thematically, yes. Um, but also, Urgot, I think, especially in this team... Oh, what a oh, good so sidestep! I think Urgot, especially in this team, wants as much uh, survivability as possible. And Chemtank will have the dual benefit of giving Urgot that survivability and also allowing them to keep pace with Kha'Zix, Fizz, and Vayne, all of whom are going to be quite difficult to catch up to. Yeah, I think that is an option, but I think you're going to get more mileage out of the bruisery items. Just because Urgot, when he is built full tank, tends to fall off even harder. He has He's always going to struggle in the later stages of the game because he is a low-range champion, but especially if you build him full tank, he's going to real, real be sad. I don't know. Sunfire Aegis is also messed up this patch. Mm, that's true. You know, it actually would probably stack pretty quickly on Urgot because of his mm -hmm. W again. It's a purge. Sunfire Aegis. Maybe the plan. We'll see. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited, as you may be able to tell, to discover where exactly this Urgot goes. Uh, TJ, I, I was out of curiosity checking prior uh, pro players' games on Urgot to see what they were running. One of them has gone for Prowler's Claw, not just once, but twice. Yeah! <laughs> I'd be in for that. It, it makes a weird amount of sense, right? Because uh, if by a weird amount of sense you make, you mean it makes perfect sense, then yes. Well, yeah. Like well, ironically, because you're going to be able to... Uh, Lethalion Urgot was, for a time, the build for him. It was a very short period where all the one tricks were going Lethality Urgot. They were going Black Cleaver Dustblade into Randuance. And this was two, three years ago now. But I think this is theory crafting. You should never do this because it's almost guaranteed to be bad. But if you are doing it, here's the reasons I could justify it. Um, the shotgun knees is really what Urgot is all about in terms of burst, and the one way people usually activate that passive is by finding the flipping gauge. Uh, with Prowler's Claw, you're guaranteed to get another path through the target, guaranteed to find a way to ref refresh those shotgun knees and get even more damage out. And it's not like well, he hates the stats the item gives either. Well, also, 
Urgot's biggest problem is that he's really slow. Mm -hmm. Crab legs aren't what they used to be. Sticking oh. on people, getting to people, all struggle buffers. This hook did land, but uh, as we we're discovering with a flash forward, that was not necessarily the right call. We have a rotate down there as well. Keep an eye on that situation as it develops. It's Pinkdar. <laughs> Was headed down. TJ, you went full BBC News reporter there. We cut away, and I was just trying to figure out what words to fill the time. Yeah, those are the exact, <laughs> the exact news anchor words. So I'm glad, I'm glad you have that in you. If you ever decide esports is no longer for you, I think you have a beautiful career as a news anchor. I think I could do weather as well. Yeah, you have, you have enough powerful weather energy. <laughs> to find powerful weatherman energy. No, 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 not weatherman energy, weather energy. Okay. I don't actually want a definition of that. I'm okay with that <laughs> remaining ambiguous. <laughs> Good, because I don't have one. Uh, Northview High School have the same abbreviation NHS as the National Health Service in the UK. Yeah, and interesting, Lambert HS uh, has LHS, which stands for the National Health Service. <laughs> Where's that? Um, I, not the UK. That's all I. All my sources will tell me. Okay. Could be Latvian. There we go. I'm just fitful. I'm coming up with great ideas over here. Uh, we didn't really have a firm idea what was going to work out for that Urgot in the top lane. I would like to mm -hmm. report that so far he is lane bullying a Scion. And I suspect that's going to continue. Ooh, going to be picking up the move speed there from the. Oh god, I don't know what this new item is called, because it's just old phage, but it has a new name. The Hearthbound Axe? Is that it? I Sounds right. I was also having a moment there where I was hoping you would know the name of the glowy axe that people buy now. Mm, Hearthbound Axe? It's a Google result. I'm clicking uh -huh. on it. That's uh -huh. it, baby! I knew it! Woo! That's we it. Got That's what I'm talking about! We got BBC Newsreel voice. Tune in, playversus.com. <laughs> Spring signups 2021 now available. Starting Start March, March 1st. 1st. Enroll today. That's right. We're here. Hopefully, someone someone at Playvers is watching. They're like, that's the wrong time for this. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just we just care about prop, it that baby. much. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes oh. and. Good root down bottom. Applesaurus Rex now in trouble as they may be rooted for a second time and the Purple Durple himself comes down to confirm the kill. Up top. Ooh, uh, he got that out. Sounds alive. Derpy Legend survived that turret shot. So it will be a 1-1 even trade across the map. Of course, the pink down bottom will result in an Ocean Drake over to Lambert. Sorry, TJ. I was just realizing. So I ended in a weird place. So it's okay. Yeah, you and I, you and I did some research on the teams before before we got in here, and we were trying to figure out what was Derpy Legends' deal. And we were like, you know what? They have a YT in their name. We should go on YouTube, check them out. This is the only time, as a matter of fact, that that has worked in the history of ever. So yeah, nobody. If you put <laughs> YT in your name to indicate you have a YouTube channel, nobody ever goes to that YouTube channel. Unless you're playing in a play versus tournament and the casters want to know what kind of things you do. We could not find their YouTube channel, uh, which made me come to a exist. which made me come to a weird realization, TJ. Is this mm -hmm. has that combination of characters now lost its meaning for this generation of kids such that it's just something you add to your name, like the XX no. of generations before? It is it is occasionally used ironically. Mm. Which may be the case. Because I remember uh, there were in I I have a history of MMOs. I used to play MapleStory a lot. Uh, there was a large uh, Asian American population, and a lot of them had AZN in their names, uh, which spells Asian when you send it out. And they all had that. And then someone else, I I watched this conversation happen in real time. They, someone had AZN in their names, and it was like, "Hey, you Asian?" The person was like, "Nope." 
<laughs> that was the end of that. Because they just saw it and they were like, that sounds cool. That looks cool. I'm going to put that in my name. I'm wondering if that's the case with the Derpy Legend. Not to my knowledge. It would nah. be strong on brand for a Derpy Legend, though. You know what? Send me, send me, if we just missed your YouTube channel, send me your Minecraft Let's Play. Yeah, I'll, I'd watch, I'll watch it. Minecraft's cool. This game is pretty dead even. That might be about to change as our stun combo does come through again in the bot lane, again onto Applesaurus. There is no backup this time in the top lane. In the meantime, though, we have both jungles here. Smart little pig does go down in the bot lane. This is cross map action. Oh my goodness. The other, the Jin, smart little pig, is still alive for a moment, will be hunted down by Ryaku. And with Unitario falling in the top lane, that is going to be three kills to none, Northview picking them up. So, TJ, I did look up, as we got into game, how you would pronounce the second smart little pig. Because the support oh, yeah. what's, has the. What's the difference? So, uh, they have the accent aigu, as I learned it in French class. I was not really good at French, as you can tell. Um, Where? What? Where did I take French? No, where is the accent aigu? Accent aigu. I disrespect French people. It's, um, it's, it's used in various languages. Not in French, according to Wikipedia. So, I'm not sure why that's where I learned it, but... You know what? We're just going to roll with it and say Wikipedia might have been wrong. Um, it uh, is in Icelandic countries. It extends the vowel. So it would be okay, smart little pig is the gym. I can't see it. What's the, where is it? It's the last I in smart little pig. It's the I in pig. They look identical to me. Because yeah, we're rocking on like 720p at best uh, with a little bit of pixelization because that's how the internet works um but i did look it up beforehand and that is 100 percent the difference in the ign's it's pronounced smart little p so there you go i don't know what to do with this information i'm Mostly giving you a, pronun I'm giving you a pronunciation guide these... for our players I, do, I don't know which of these players allegedly has an accent mark smart little peak but which which of the two players named Smart Little Pig has the accent mark to make their name different? It's the Karma. Okay. Let's say that like it's obvious. It was, TJ. I feel like this is very simple. You just have to look them up before the game. Apple Soros Rex, a name I can carry through will be dropped. Uh, that's good a good name. poke, and it's a very, very well-timed engagement down bottom again, uh, because this Drake is about to come up. Yep, a few seconds. Everyone's going to actually be resetting from the side of Lambert High School. National Health Service finding their way around that Drake. And we'll keep the bot lane around, so we'll be enough for them to potentially rotate and pivot down to their second Drake in a row. Come on, that top lane, totally Unitato is just vibing against this Scion, uh, but not doing great. So maybe vibing is not the operative term. Uh, the vibes can be bad. True. Bad vibing. Um, that is, of course, because there have been two consecutive ganks come up from Swittle. I think you said there were too many vowels, TJ. I think it's Swittle. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'll be pronouncing it in team fights. Wait out for it. <laughs> uh, but our questions as to what the Urgot will build have not been answered. Uh, I mm -hmm. would like to raise confirmation as to what the Poppy will be building. It does certainly look like the Sunfire Aegis. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, actually any of the Bami Cinder upgrades here. Crossfire would be a bit of a stretch, but definitely doable. But I think uh, Chem Tank might not be bad on Poppy. Oh boy, uh -huh. here comes the teleport. TP in, and the Thresh CC has already landed. Hello, Pig! And he huffed and puffed and blew the house down. It might get worse, as the second one will be called underneath the turret. I'm just yanked forward. 
Now, looking up in the top lane, trying to find a gank. The flash Ooh. in from Vikadar. We'll be able to find an answer on the top side of the map. So, one for one across the map. Um, one for two, rather. But yeah, it buddy. looks like Swiddle had the Rift Herald, DJ. Yeah, and that engagement up top just didn't need to happen. Neither does this strictly. We'll see how it plays out. Unitato runs the wrong direction. May have survived if they move towards the poppy, as is. That'll make this difficult, but Pike Doran does not do enough damage. Close the kill. We'll have oh my goodness. Coming in. Flash forward to secure it. Curtain call in the meantime. Hammers through the tankier members of this bot lane. They, no surprises, will survive. Now, Ethelthor's Rex being zoned off a little bit. There's the root coming down. Raikou trying to oh, follow GP. up. Teleport comes in from the top side of the map. Flash away from Raikou alongside the heel. But the root will land. Oh. Flash forward to find the auto attack. Smart little pig finishes Ooh. off one. The finish off onto two. Can you find three? No. Sion this has been lost to time. It's made out of stainless steel. Hmm. That's an upgrade, TJ. The strongest one was bricks in the original. And they built this one out of rock and roll. <laughs> I, that was a whole city, not just one house, TJ. Oh, okay. Understandable. Don't know, don't know about musical references that well. It's okay. uh, but it, it does mean that Lambert have managed to save what looks like it would be a weak side for them. Um, and they've done this twice consecutively. Totally Unisato did just get the assist up in the top lane alongside some turret plates that will be upgrading their own progress and down bottom things look better we'll see how long that lasts as swittle does go in scared away by the karma leash of a second opportunity to jump in there but does not take advantage of it understandably enough bad bug down root will miss uh will follow from smart little peak will be enough to stop the fight from going any further. I still don't know what Totally Unitato is up to. I am still at a complete loss here. Yeah, a little bit of Build-A-Bear action happening as we do seem to be heading towards the Thornmail. The cull is complete at this point, but hasn't been sold yet. Turret down bottom will drop. Northview earning out a 1,000 gold lead off the back of it. And of course that will grow now with the turret gone. It's probably going to be Stridebreaker, I think, up here on the top side. I'm really interested in this Urgot, um, but it is not loving me back so far. <laughs> Poor. Well, you're you're going to be able to get rid of Cull on this back, so we'll see. Yeah. Oh, boy. Four man gank spot in the mid lane. There is no way you can get out of that. It's purple purple. It's doing a lot of damage, though. Purple with three kills during the early game. Mm hmm. Certainly feeling pretty good right now. We're getting the back. We're going to get our Urgot answer. As totally Unisado manages to go to base, will sell the cull. Stridebreaker. That wasn't any of my options, but Stridebreaker will come through, as you say. Yep. You just want to... It's a Juggernaut-focused item, really powerful on Urgot, because he needs the extra get at him I'm going to say. It's not mobility, it's get out of my tube because it's a juggernaut. I like it. Yeah. Just waiting. It sounds like it's going to be appropriated by managers in like the next three years. <laughs> yeah. Someone at Apple is going to tell their employee if they don't have enough to get out of my tube. In order to work here, we require applicants to have the right amount of get out of my tube. Thanks, I hate it. I think midline uh, play didn't result in much, but there was a free kill handed over by Applesaurus, who stood on a control board and autoed it, knowing, or at least he ought to have known, that Lambert were going to be contesting this Drake. That hands over the Drake again, which is the reason I'm really drawing attention to it. Lambert now are one Drake away from confirming the soul. That has rather disastrous implications. Oh my god, Swiddle does so much damage. The exhaust isn't enough. Goes into the ultimate. Gonna be able to find Smart Little Pig as well. A little bit Save. of denial coming out from Picadar. There's the stun to follow it up. Keeper's verdict. Tons of damage. Curtain call coming out. One Whoa. hit. Two. Picadar finishes the kill. 2-0-2 two, two on this poppy. Picadar rolling in with the perfect timing. A great save there. Very good communication. 
denies, of course, the bonus isolation damage from Swittle. And then they're able to follow up and just chain CC Swittle against the wall. No keyboard commands today. Hmm, there's only so long you can deny those keyboard commands, though, and that's kind of what I'm starting to worry about. Because while Lambert have a really good scaling composition of their own with the Victor uh, and Jin, whose new itemization allows them to scale a little bit better than before, I, I really have concerns with that Kha'Zix getting out of hand in the mid game. Already 4 and 2 has the Dust Blade completed, and these team fights are going to get really, really messy with that Kha'Zix constantly going invisible. So that's that's my concern. You ready uh, for mid game or got that? Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the spice. Give me the big team fights. I just need one where Yunusaito is able to get the ultis off. I just I just need Yunusaito to be able to like play the game. Um, because they've been having they've been having a rough top lane, like chain ganked in the early game. Um, I will say though, before we get off the subject of those chain ganks, Swiddle, the phase rush build coming back in this style. I'm happy to see this come back. Um, this is a style that is more built around getting in, getting out, getting back in, uh, based around damage. So you go in, blow your combo, and then you walk out while ulting and it keeps you invisible. And in this case, especially with the Dust Blade, you can do that and just walk back in and out at a thousand move speed just on every single assassination, whether you have your E or not. And, and that I means that's really what's cool. gonna make the CC available to Lambert so important. If they can mm -hmm. stun the bug, they can kill the bug. If they don't stun the bug, they're gonna have a very bad time. And the same can be said for the Fizz of Bento Docks. Yeah, we haven't seen the Fizz get to do a whole lot either. Uh, the only time we saw it was when it rotated up towards the top side of the map and took down Unitato. So I think the the big question here is, how much does that lead in the mid lane actually help Purple Nerf? Because that was a dominant laning phase, dominant uh, rotations to kill, but realistically, not a whole lot further ahead than anyone else in the game. This is still a very even game, despite it being three dragons in favor of Lambert. Yeah, and I think that's what, what has to make the difference here. Like, you're looking at this and the golds, even the kills are slightly skewed to north view. But Lambert are in the lead because they have three drakes and are one away from Soul. And that is their mm -hmm. lead. And if they get it, it's this really weird position of, okay, uh, Northview were doing really good. They were really bringing it back. And now they've lost literally all of their progress and they can't find their way back into this game. When in any other game, in any other game state, objective-wise, they'd be able to pull their way back. Um, so I'm hoping for, for their sake that they're able to contest this final dream. I sneezed into the mic. Did you like that? Mm hmm <gasps> Death sentence will land. It's onto the support, though. Jin and the back lines will stay safe, be able to deny the access as their second wave of attacks comes through from Northview here in the mid lane. They will have successfully picked up Smart Little Pig on Karma and now on Jin. Underneath the turret, maybe a turn. Low HP across the board, but no confirmed kills. And the death sentence lands CC to make that four consecutive kills. The only living player is totally Unisado, who was absent from this fight. One player will die just to turret shots. That was Applesaurus on the Thresh. And it'll be an ace. So about that dragon, TJ. <laughs> I what, think what? Northview Tell should head on over to it. Uh, Northview are going to be able to get it now because there's no one to stop them. Okay. It's going to keep the game going. We got more legends of League Esports. Woo! That's Woo! what I came here to watch today. Oh. I came here to watch F1. So I'm glad we came in with oh, different expectations. really rough, mate. I don't <laughs> yeah. know how that happens. <laughs> I'd never watched it before. And they were like, hey. Sure. Log into this VMix link. Uh, People are really into F1, though. People that like yeah, F1, they really like it. So I, it's one of those. It's one of those things where I feel like I must be missing out on something. My girlfriend's dad was like, "Hey, you use a VPN, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." This is back when I was working in China. They were like, "Hey, um, can you help me set up F1 then?" 
because apparently you couldn't get it through like Canadian internet. They were, to be clear, he wanted to pay for it. He just couldn't in Canada. It was like, can I pretend I'm in like Norway? I'm like, yeah, that's what a VPN is. So, <laughs> shout out to the F1 fans, even when uh, the country they're in doesn't make it easy. F1 is so good. When are they going to release F2? I know. Been waiting for it. Actually, I think it might go backwards though, TJ, because we have really? well, we have Nintendo's F Zero franchise, and I... that's set in the future, you know. Oh, so okay. maybe it, you know, decreased it. So we're waiting for F Zero Point Five. Purple Nurple did get picked up there in the top lane, and that will continue a pattern of disaster. Got to turn the tables somehow. Oh, 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 Northview oh, oh. decide to do it with an excellent combo there in the mid line. That last curtain call shot, mm, clean, beautiful. Flash the, the only wall. curtain call shot. Didn't need spars. Exactly. Now you get the refund on the cooldown. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes until this next strike comes up, so I suspect we won't see too much action until then. Other uh, team is really incentivized to push for it. I do think the later we go, probably the better for Lambert, so... I would like to see Northview try and force something here. Mm, they're trying, TJ. <laughs> they're... Yeah. It's a little more aggression than I expected, mm -hmm. to be honest. Really good, though. Their Scion is incredibly terrifying. Because if you look at the answers that Lambert have, it is uh, nothing. Because Unitato can kind of do damage to tanks, but not really. Doesn't have the completed Black Cleaver, which is really the only way you're going to be able to start chewing through that health for Jupiter Legend. And maybe Purple Nurper can do damage because there's not a ton of magic resist built up yet, but it really is looking a little risky. Maybe I'm missing a trick here, but I don't know why he rushed Bramble Vest. Um, good question. Um, the traditional answer on Anyone other than Urgot is Conqueror healing, but since it is Urgot, every single hit of Purge reflects back in the Bramble Pass. Yeah. So instead of getting, you know, hit back with eight damage every auto attack that takes five seconds in between when you're poking, it is, okay, you suddenly just killed yourself with your Purge. Um, so Bramble Vest is really strong, particularly into Urgot, but now... Oh, you met on the Urgot itself. Uh, Grasp, I guess. Okay. I was trying to keep track of that. I'm gonna have a curtain call already deployed here in the mid lane. Bento Docks will go down. This is an aggressive look for Lambert. Death Sentence will connect again onto the support Karma, which leaves Jin. Free to just free fire here in the back lines. Unitato does go down. That Vayne doing huge damage. Switzle will successfully disengage from a hit and run. No, chased down by Purple Nerfle. And this means that despite several consecutive fights, we've got a win for Lambert in the mid lane. Which is Turn not where I thought this was going to be going. It that turns was out. If you ignore Jin and Victor in a team's backline, <laughs> you lose a fight. What? No. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I I don't know how a non-accented name comes to mean senior. Um. Because the other one had to get smart little pig. Mm. So, they were referencing Smart Little Pig, which means the one on the gin is senior. I think I found a, a cursed variation of this name that would also work instead of the accent over the eye. Smart Little Pog, if you thought. I can't process that. We're going to talk after this. <laughs> Drake is up, it is all important. This would be Mountain Soul if Lambert picked it up, which makes that team find out one moment to go. Critical. Here we go. 3000 HP remaining on it. Looks like it will be the engage into the backline from the fresh. 2000 HP still remaining on the Mountain Drake. Fizz dives in, not going to be able to find an assassination just yet. Still alive, gets finally taken down by PKDR. The dragon has reset. Swiddle doing a ton of oh. damage into the backline. What a lantern! That went for miles, but Raikou is down. 
There's no AD carry in this fight left for Northview. And that means Derpy Legend, last one standing for their team within this team fight, will finally fall. And that should mean Mountain Drake over the Lambert High School long haul. I was like, this Scion's dead. And then Derpy Legend was like, the pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. <laughs> Drake will be scooped up for Lambert, and that is the soul, a win condition. It's Mountain, so it doesn't necessarily guarantee the win, but it certainly points towards it. Everyone on that team will be that much more difficult to kill. Uh, and as we head towards the late game, the Assassin players, the Fizz, the uh, uh, Kha'Zix, are going to start to wonder why they're not hitting so hard. I think it was... Realistically, you know, if we had to rank these, this game, Infernal always going to come first in my mind in terms of how useful it is. Just any composition that wants to do damage wants Infernal. But I think Mountain is really the second best option here, especially in the Northview team composition who are mostly focused around burst. Having a rechargeable shield at the beginning of every single fight is really powerful. I'm a big Ocean Drake fan. Yeah, Ocean tanks, Drake is the so coolest. That's probably why. No, I think Ocean Drake is like the coolest. I love healing up to full in the middle of a team fight without lifesteal. Um, are they really starting this? That Drake, or did that ward really get replaced? Uh, yes, they are going for this. That is your answer. Or got actually quite good for objective tags, so it should fall pretty quickly. We'll see how Swittle goes in for the steal. <laughs> They're denied. Stunned up. Your visa has not been cleared. You will not enter the Baron Pit. Do not pass go. Do not collect $3,000. I don't know how much, how life works. Mm. Board game, but also life. Well, considering that reference is from Monopoly, TJ, exactly. I really don't know where to start with you today. <laughs> <laughs> it's early, I have guess. You, it's the beginning of the show day. Have you played life? I have. It's fun. Ooh, what a good lantern. I don't think it's fun. Turtle fall in mid uh, with the wave baron to up. You would like to go for more, but they're all split on the Lambert side. So you'll probably see a back, which is indeed where we're headed. Are you like this item adaptation from Swiddle? Sorry, I mispronounced that. Do you think you're going to say Squirtle? And I'm excited every time because I know how much you love Pokemon. I do. They should make a, Pokemon a version of game. life, the board game, with Pokemon. <laughs> Your new job, Pokemon trainer. Annual salary, 10,000 Poke dollars. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the gym leaders really are the salary you're looking for. That's more in the 80,000 range. Uh, oh my, and what's the conversion rate on those? Yeah. It's 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 crazy, TJ. But you really want the elite four position? That's that's the pro athlete position in the traditional game of life. It's really, I can make this for you, Nintendo. I'm just saying. I don't, life sucks, so I don't know why they <laughs> the board game and oh, Baron good. will be pushing down the mid lane. This is potentially for the win. Deep behind the turret will go the dive. Unitario finally able to get into a fight positively. We'll find the kill. This backline assassination attempt, but Stasis is ready to meet it. And Purple survives the initial dive, and that means they've won the fight. Miraculously, no less. I really did not expect them to get the advantage in that fight two times in a row. But once again, Purple Nurple and Smart Little Pig played the fight beautifully. We're able to put out consistent DPS ultimately finish off Northview's team. This means the Lambert High School Longhorns will make their way to 1-0 and potentially match points if we get into game number two. They need two wins in order to be the state champions here in Georgia. And we will see if they can put it together after we head to game two. Before we do that, however, I wanted to ask you, Matt and Iberia Clem Daniel, how you felt about Urga? Hmm. Like, fine. Yeah. Wasn't thrilled, wasn't like disappointed. We did I was excited. See poppy alt. Yeah. I we didn't see a whole lot out of the Urgot. Kind of just chilled top. Was like I'm I'm crab walking up here. Dealing with dealing with a tank. Okay. We're good. That's the end of the game. Alright, head down, take out the Nexus. 
Yeah. Um, I think the Longhorns can walk away very happy with how their top side of the map played. Uh, because mm -hmm. neither the Urgot nor the Poppy really had too much impact. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Strength was through the bottom side of the map where... Sorry, Northview lost out. Um, I would say... Honestly, I, I feel like Northview's bot lane did well. I think given... If this game had gone longer, if a Drake... One more Drake had been contested, Northview could have won this. And very well may have. I think I think Northview's bot lane was playing all right, but they were definitely the focus. There was so much mm -hmm. emphasis from the Longhorns on getting their own bot lane ahead that Northview just got shoved further and further behind down bottom. Which, you know, is why that Urgot struggled. It is why that Urgot was left alone to be ganked three times in a row during the early game. Let's not pretend that Urgot fell behind in a vacuum. Uh, but maybe something to address into game two. Mm -hmm. Either match the bot lane focus or accelerate your top lane to make sure it's worth it. So what a Scion is going to do with extra gold lead, I do not know. We're going to go to a quick break. Five minutes from now, we hit game number two. A chance for the run back. A chance for the state title. Don't go far. We'll be right back with more of the play versus full 2020 high school championship after this.
Welcome back to the Play vs. High School Championship. My name is TJ. Oh, and I'm Matt Niberia Clintaniel. <laughs> Hi, TJ. I wasn't ready to do my do own that. intro. We were, we were doing it live. We're into cave number two here of our Georgia State Finals, uh, and I believe we could just blast right forward into the draft. Okay, so last game we saw an ergot, and the ergot didn't do terrible. Didn't do great, but didn't do terrible. And I think that's the most shocking thing that I've seen so far. Um, because... Maybe we should just do that. Do you want it? Okay, if we go to game three, we're doing that again, but we're ready for it this time. Okay. Right. Kind of liked it. There was, a good, there was a good pacing. You caught it quickly. Um, you weren't a fan of the Ergot Northview. Weren't a fan, apparently, of the Poppy Jungle. They'll get rid of it real mm -hmm. fast. Um... On the opposite side, Kha'Zix and Kaisa Bandan. I believe the same bands as our first time round. I think it's I think it's interesting that you ban out the Poppy there because I don't think that the Poppy was the linchpin of the composition or something that was incredibly abnormally good for PKDAR. Uh, I think really the reason the Poppy was so strong was just because it was picked into champions against which Poppy's really strong. Steadfast Presence can ground you out of any dash, so of course it's going to be good into a Kha'Zix. Of course it's going to be good into a Fizz. You know, these things make a lot of sense. I don't know if that means it's worth banning, is my only concern there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not going to ban the Urgot, though. So. <laughs> True. Jin first pick for Lambert. Uh, maybe he could have been banned instead. Jin's real good right now. Vain to answer from Northview, assuming the same tanky roster will come through. I expect we also get a Lulu there to back up the Vayne. I'm not on the Lulu train that a lot of people here today have been on. I think in this case it's cool. Like, protect the Vayne compositions are as old as League of Legends itself. And this was popularized by good old Double Lift back when he was on Rock Solid. Yeah, that's right. You've never heard of that team name because it's. No, it meant older than some to of me. the audience, I'm sure. Um, but it's this is shaping up to be one of those exact compositions. You know, you have heavy CC in the front line for the vein. You have the Lulu to enable her and give her buffs. So it really is. Once again, I want to see focus this time from Lambert on that bottom side. I want to see real hard focus. I need that vein to be just absolutely punted out of the game, or things are probably not going to go great for Lambert. Um, as we have been talking about that CC frontline, I also want to address the possibility of just building tanks because they first picked Jin. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of why the Lulu surprised me because Jin can bully the Lulu. And if you just pick Leona, then the Jin loses life. Yeah. Uh, so that would, that would have been my counter argument. 
We got a Hecarim for Lambert alongside the Karma again down bottom. And Pike always scary. Cassiopeia will take the mid lane into Hecarim, which feels like a statement of confidence, if nothing else. I mean, you could technically ground him or something. Nah, he goes fast. Hmm, I said technically, TJ. Mordecai you can't are... ult for this half second you are on the miasma. Mordekaiser is in the top lane, and Malzahar will take mid. As we wrap out the draft with a Kled to answer. Kled, if I'm not mistaken, did hit the ban list during game number one. Mm-hmm, uh, believe Lambert so. getting rid of it. So, maybe a, a, maybe a strong pick for Derpy Legend. I'm interested in seeing it. We've seen Kled have varying levels of success um, into other picks, uh, especially yesterday. But you know what? I'm looking forward to it. I always like seeing more Kled. I'm interested in seeing whether this is going to be the Gore Drinker or the Sunfire Aegis variant. We'll see. TBD, I suppose. Hey, Producer Pine. What was it we wanted to ask you during game number one? God. I don't even remember. Well, British Pine was not paying attention, so... <laughs> Between the three of us, none of us know what it was. I was like, maybe we can <laughs> circle back. Yeah, I know you were busy, but... I'm sorry. I thought you could multitask, producer. <laughs> She's gonna fire me after this. <laughs> It's game number two, of course, a game one victory went to Lambert, mostly through the strength of their bottom line, the Pig Brothers stepping up, especially with the aid of the jungle and mid-rotate. We'll see how that changes in game number two, as Northview have changed up their draft, and hopefully their focus as well. And I think I was distracted by Georgia facts, TJ, can I read you a few? Um, what was interesting to me as someone who lives in Delaware, uh, because the Delaware wildlife is not interesting at all, there's, uh, black bears and bobcats in Georgia. And also gophers. And, like, I think one I'm of those is not like the other. Yeah, I agree. Gophers are so much more interesting than the other two. Um, because I, I don't know, I don't think of gophers as things that exist in the real world, but apparently in Georgia, y'all just got what? gophers. Why not? I don't know. Like, I don't think of kiwi birds as being a thing that exists in the real world. Or narwhal. Okay. You're just admitting to, like, more... Like gophers. <laughs> How do you feel about bees? Um, pretty sweet. So yeah, then... Honey? Yeah, right, I got it. But, like, why are bees real when gophers aren't? Because I have bees near me. And also, I was bit by a bee once, and it hurt like hell. Bit? Mm-hmm. Apparently, <laughs> bees can bite. <laughs> I didn't know this, but if a bee feels threatened, but doesn't want to, you know, die from stinging someone, they can just bite him instead, and it hurts like hell to a little eight-year-old. I think it might have been a wasp, not a bee. How, but... how are you so non-threatening that a bee bites you instead of stings you? <laughs> Because I was swimming at the time, and I came up for air, and I was like, Ow, what was that? And it was a bee biting me. Utterly fascinating, and yet on brand. <laughs> Lambert High School are playing it slow across the map in the top side, but down bottom, we're right back to what won them game number one, this aggressive Jin Karma lane. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really powerful here again as well. Um, as you were pointing out, it won't do great into the Ooh. Sichuani in the later stages of the game. But for the meantime, against the very squishy Vayne and Lulu, you're going to have a great time. You're going to be really just vibing out like crazy in the bottom lane. And that's what we want to see coming out from Lambert as well, because I want this gin to pop off further. I want it to do more, because uh, there's not going to be a hard carry performance likely coming out from any other champions in this game, except maybe the Hecarim. The, the other thing, of course, that won game one for Lambert was uh, the excellent mid lane performance. Mm -hmm. now, Mal Malzahar, a little bit different, a little bit harder, I should think, to build out an early roaming lead on than Victor. You think? 
<laughs> we'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, on the top lane, though, Derpy Legend has a really good trade into Unitado. Uh, if Unitado just keeps this up, I think Derpy Legend just dies. So, Ooh. oh, mm. very nicely played. played. Off the dismount, and Unitado is yet again behind in lane. This time by 10 HP or so. A tragic death. I would like to provide an update. Um, the purple nurple, Nathan Kim, who was playing mid lane for mm -hmm. Lambert during the last game, you may have noticed he has been uh, dropped out of the roster. That is because Facade, who has just joined, is actually the main jungler. Uh, a senior over Purple Nurple, who is a sophomore. And I will, I do have more fun facts, but oh my we God. should acknowledge the speed and violence with which this bot lane is getting eradicated first. Two kills passed over to Lambert as they, well, do exactly what won them game number oh, look one. look at that timing. Mm -hmm. Look at that timing, too, just at the five the minute mark, thing. just as the Drake comes up. The it's Kadar. exactly the same thing that happened during game mm -hmm. number one. Lambert show up in the bot lane, win an early fight, turn that into the Drake. I think this is really cool. I want to give props to the team and the coaching staff for coming up with the strategy because this is definitely a team-wide strategy. You have to have the bot lane in a position where you're letting the opponent push so that your jungler has a better angle and be ready for that five-minute gank knowing it's coming. So this is like a legitimate strategy. This isn't just them being like, oh, look at that. The lane happened to be pushing into us at five minutes. And I always love shouting that out, especially at the high school level, which is like the very first level of organized play that players uh, play in. Very oh, exciting yeah. to see those strategies come out. Uh, can we have a fun fact here? Mm -hmm. Can you guess Facade's real name? Um... Pick a name. Feral Cade. Now, you want to know something wild? That name, like any other name you could have chosen just there, is less cool than Facade's real name. Okay, what is it? Carson Powers. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the lead in a spy thriller circa 1974. Huh. My name's Carson Powers. Tom Clancy's writing this midline. <laughs> That's not true. The midline looks good. <laughs> Say that about Tom Clancy. <laughs> he doesn't sponsor play versus. I don't care about him. You can get away with that. <laughs> Lambert will be pushing forward off the TP play here in the bot lane, but none of the CC lands, so oh! it's down to this ultimate. You order Alan CC. Powers! There is a full serving. Beautiful. I, I genuinely cannot believe that worked. That was the pie in the sky dream of an engage. It's like, hey, what if I teleported behind them? And they just don't get out in time. You know what? That's exactly what happened. Teleport flash ult. As soon as his ultimate came up, that was what that was what prompted this. Facade is just playing the mid lane, and he goes, "Hey, my ultimate's up. What if I TP flash ult bot lane? Do you think that would help us win?" Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> Word. <laughs> <laughs> Agent Powers is on the case. Oh, with a peg goo dab. That, what's your favorite emote? I haven't asked you this in a few months. Me and Cubby had an extensive discussion about this stuff. Oh, so I'm, uh, right. I think I think I'm rolling with the disappointed Jinx. Hmm, it's a good one. I think uh, what, mine is going to be the exclusive uh, Puy's TFT emote, just because. Played enough TFT to get it, and if I don't think it's my favorite, what was all that battle passing for? <laughs> Thought you were having fun playing TFT. <laughs> Enjoying video games, TJ? Who do you think I am? Oh, you're right. Carson Powers is who I think you are. Oh, man. He's out ahead. Uh, I will note this lane itself is going over to Bento Docks. Carson is playing very safe. We're on a first name basis now. We're cool. Hmm. Um, but Facade has done all of that without taking any risks, and that's been, I think, the primary directive there. 
don't give the Casio any gold, sit back, scale to sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's just a hacker in the bush, guys. And just as quickly, there was not a little bit of magic there. You might be wondering, totally Unitato, why, why is it so rough to be you? And the answer is because Unitato has no friends. It's just a weak side lane all the way through. Mm -hmm. Flash has oh, to be goodness. burned. And this is what I was talking about. Unitato doing a very good job considering. Will survive! Almost got the kill nonetheless as well. I mean, this is <laughs> as bad as well as he could be doing. Yeah, two ultimates invested into that. Does not die. Unitato putting in a heroic effort there in the top lane. I think as well, going into that, uh, having a CS advantage. I I think I wish Unitato would stop going for these scraps. Because I think it's, it's of more benefit to you to just keep farming up. Because you'll beat the Kled. They rushed Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker kind of sucked. Oh boy, Bento going for the strategy. Flash away from Smart Little Pig. Will fall to the last auto from Raikou. So, <laughs> Bento Docs taking a page out of Fasad's book. Sorry, Agent Carson Powers. I just stood up in a weird way and discovered that I had a pen from 2013 in my jacket mm -hmm. pocket. Hmm. That's why I was your. AOV jacket? Yeah. This turret, or sorry, this drink is under threat. It's like <laughs> a turret, but it moves. Uh, so not at all like a turret, yeah. Flat. <laughs> uh, is under threat, will be collected by Northview, as they, for one, are the ones off of the tempo uh, in the bot line. Every previous time, Lambert has had control, but I think they got distracted after... Totally Unitato survived the lane engagement up top. They wanted to back up Totally Unitato, mm -hmm. and they ended up sending some a weird amount of resources up to try and maybe grab a kill or something. Very unnecessary. If you're going to leave Unitato on weak side, commit to it. And I think Unitato really, once again, needs to just not try and take trades into this Kled, because the Kled's going to win it 9 out of 10 times, especially in the early game. So, no. actually... scale up. Oh, once a lot of shadows in, there's no conceivable follow up. Oh my oh. lord, he is his own follow up. Very nearly finds the kill. And because of the TP, because of the amount of resources that just got thrown into this bot lane, there are opportunities open elsewhere. Smart little peg will slip into the bush here. Maybe gets away with this. Flash forward, blast cone over the wall. He's got it. Clean. To safety! That makes it out nonetheless under the tower. <laughs> Cheeky little root, smart little pig. So, all things considered, that was a pretty decent trade for Lambert, actually. Like, that was a lot of resources committed by Northview, and Facade was able to get a ton of turret plates off in the mid lane. Yeah, the, the only thing that Northview got out of that was a kill onto the jungler, and... Uh, Facade was chewing on midline turrets during the time. Uh, Unitato, I believe, did get some turret plating. At the very least, they just got a lot of gold uh, from CS. Mm -hmm. So, completely worth it. Starting to see why um, Unitato is struggling in this lane. Looking at that itemization. So, I understand the tendency to go towards defensive itemization when you're losing a lane but my problem with it is you will never start winning the lane until you put those resources into offensive items and i think that's why this mordekaiser is struggling in the 1v1 are you because referring there's... to the bramble vest rush uh the bramble vest plus the seeker's arm guard plus because the plated I... steel caps i want to point out that the bramble vest rush was what they did on ergot as well <laughs> you know what that cracked at least Bento may have bitten off a little more than they can chew, never mind. Gonna be just fine despite that death realm, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. No AP whatsoever. No damage. So, Unitado, hopefully going to be finally building some offensive items next. And that Bramble Vest was real useful, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Well, I mean, the, the really, the really messed up part, right, is that, like, look at the rest of their team. Everyone else has a method because of the advantages they do, they've accrued across the map, but because Unitado has spent so much gold into well. essentially palliative care. Well, and then the, the Kled lane swaps. So none of these items are useful anymore. I do, I do want to also recognize that Unitano is is being left on an island. Unitano mm -hmm. is playing weak side. Um, the the game plan was to leave Unitano all alone and make the rest of the map do the work, and Unitano would just suffer. Yeah, and that plan is only... working. Unitano is playing their role in that plan, suffering bravely for the greater <laughs> good. <laughs> sure are suffering, up here. <laughs> One v one into that uh, Cassiopeia will not go well. No. Fun fact is currently not going well. Well, that's sort of what I meant. Boy, I was concerned about the Ooh. all armor itemization. Well, on spot of shadows goes in. Root will be following up here onto Bento Dock. That's going to be the finish off from Picadar. So at least someone still sending some love to Unitado. And it could get worse. God, those root poke combos are beautiful. Oh, it works Ooh, again! Beautiful ult. TP Facade. flash ulti. Facade doesn't make it work to the same degree this time, but they absolutely win the poke battle. Why is that important, you ask? Well, because the Drake is coming up right about now. Mid turret will mm. fall. Adds access to the Drake. Secure second of the game in the pockets of Lambert. Should be able to pick up the Drake after that mid lane tower. Even going to be Derpy Legend backing there, so we'll be picking up the Gore Drinker soon. And Unitado, I think, is really biting off more than they should be chewing. I'm not going to say more than they can chew, because uh, it seems like they're going to be getting away with it. Looks like they were trying to solo out the red buff. Um, that's just... Hmm. There's playing with fire, and then there's dipping your toes foot first into a volcano. Uh, this is definitely in the latter category. I mean, I don't think they had a wave. Why not? You know? <laughs> They're all alone on weak <laughs> side. There's nobody else in the area. See what happens. Go for the Krogs, though. You know? Like, that's the okay. that's the easier yeah. play. Lightning Swap, baby. Woo! Mordekaiser is going bot side now. And Facade will take the top lane. You the time I'm saying on the have. comms. Yo, I'm straight up not having a good time. Lightning <laughs> <laughs> against Cassiopeia sucks. It's weird, it's almost like you're a melee. Uh, maybe that's what Fasan sent back, but they addressed the situation. With this all also armor. works quite nicely for the overall game. Because guess what Lambert want to pick up right about now? Uh, is it the Rift Herald, TJ? It is the Rift Herald. So, Unitano Woo! can continue to play weak side, can continue to be left all alone. Uh, the increase in forces after the four man rotate towards the top side will mean that Rift Herald is scooped up. Root, maybe a little land here. Will! Actually, on the Apple Store's Rex, who forces the wild growth out on themselves. But Derpy Legend coming in with the ultimate of their own. Flash forward into the engaged bear trap on a rope, plus the flash ultimate from Quiddle. Tons of damage down onto Facade, and now everyone just needs to run away. A beautiful root off the side from Smart Little Pig leaves that to just be a one-man pick. And honestly, for the amount of resources that were committed, uh, I think Lambert are going to be happy with that one. Yeah, that, that could have been a lot worse. But still, Northview spotting an opportunity. Uh, whether or not that trade was worth it, not worth it. It comes down to how good this Rift Herald is. We'll take at least one turret. That's 200, 400 gold between them, right? Mm-hmm. Time. Ooh. Probably all ready. Uh, Shelly gets slapped. More made back than they lost. Oh, and it's going to get worse. Onslaught mm, of Shadows. Onslaught of Shadows. Applesaurus is gone. Smart little pig here for the zoning. That is the mid lane. Ryaku on the Karma really struggling. Here comes Benito Docks, and they should be able to get Picadar. In the meantime, the rest of Lambert are trying to disengage, trying to stay safe, while the bot lane gets shoved. Now we have a turn. Ooh, beautiful! Ultimate coming out from Facade. 
It was not enough to keep the lockdown going. Well, oh. fight still goes. One more auto. It's all it should take, but Ben Turdox has so much healing off the back of those twin fangs. Derpy Legend, one more auto. Finally, Unitado finds their revenge. Bet you missed the Bramble Vest now. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the items all pay off, DJ. They're on the right. They're on the right champion. The right 1v1 matchup. Um, totally Unitado. It was in the bot lane during that time, and I think we would be remiss to mention, or remiss to not mention, that they did find a kill in the 1v1. Mm-hmm. Exactly what they were looking for the whole time. Uh, DJ, I have another fun Georgia fact for you while Hit we me. wait for this next dragon. Uh, off the coast of Georgia, you can find whales, including knew that. Uh, humpback whales and right whales. And I think I... my favorite uh, interpretation of why they're called right whales is like an English person. Like, ah, those are right whales right there. That's not... That isn't... Okay. <laughs> See, that's my favorite thing to do to you. It's just say, hey, this is English. And you're like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the right whale. You can see it. Those are some right whales right there. Mm. This sounds um, like... Struggling with the fact that the drink is about to come up, and neither team seems to think that's a biggie. Mm, I think I disagree there with their go. assessment, TJ. Yeah, you know, uh, Northview are the first team to rotate all their players in. You can kind of see Applesaurus trying to drag their entire team towards it. Naturally, the Glacial Prison lands. This is going to be Karma knocked out of the fight before it's begun. Totally Unitado did just arrive. We'll be inside the Death Realm. Polymorph, but chasing down the Lulu and securing the kill. Flash away to safety. We'll get them out. Now, Onslaught of Onslaught Shadows. Of shadows. The this could be big, but it is denied through beautiful CC. Ryaku stays alive. Facade has no team fight access. And this is a big win for Northview. They are going to pick up this Drake, pending a miraculous steal keeping Lambert off of the three drag soul point and turning the gold right back to dead even. This is where I'm going to start getting real worried for the state of Lambert's late game. The Longhorns are looking a little bit long in the tooth at this point with their composition. Unitado has finally come online, but the rest of the map is sort of falling off. We're not seeing Smart Little Pig find a whole lot of damage in these fights, Facade as well, ending up getting picked off. To be fair, that was a rough fight for them. It is not necessarily indicative of the fights to come, but considering that the Cassiopeia, considering that the Vayne are now off those training wheels, are now full champions in their own right, these team fights are only going to get scarier and scarier as we go. I mean, yeah, I, th I think the main reason for that fight loss was just a weird cascading failure of positioning. Like, Facade didn't get one ability cast onto an enemy mm. that whole time. Um, Smart Little Peg on the Jin just had nothing to contribute until the very end. There were a lot of positioning errors that should be your first stop if you're mm. looking to assign Blend for that fight. But I am also with you in that the longer this goes, the more worrying it is for Lambert's Longhorns. Um because the Jin will stop doing damage at some point. And you'll you'll struggle to have as much impact with something like Hakarum, who becomes a little bit more of a CC bot. Yeah, and he scales a little bit better nowadays than he did in the old item system, but that doesn't mean he <laughs> scales in the same way you would say that like a vein does. And we're seeing that consequence come to light especially that last team fight no longer able to straight up one shot the vein needs a little bit of assistance on that or a little bit of follow through and really good cc training by the way from swiddle uh to be able to prevent that engage from going further over the wall poke will land uh the the karma getting caught out was the reason the last fight went so awry mm -hmm. so you would think or maybe a little more aware of the positioning here. 
And yet. Not yet. Smart little pig. Gonna be able to find the route follow up there. But uh given that it is a Sejuani with Warmogs, mm, not really I'm really kinda questioning it, because you're putting yourself at risk. <laughs> to poke Sejuani? Yeah, not not exactly the best move macro wise. Um my concern, and you mentioned this in the draft, is how do they take care of the Sejuani? You know, because theoretically, maybe you got some damage Spot coming a. in from Unitado. Spot A, I think she'd appreciate that. Um, but Picadar doesn't really do a whole lot of damage and especially not going to be focusing on the Sejuani. As they shouldn't be. But, oh, meanwhile, we've got this 1v1 again. Let's see which way it goes this time. I think Unitado's got the better of it. Forces not out like the ultimate. in a killing way, but in a... Yeah, get out of here, kind of way. <laughs> to be fair, if if Unitado had popped the death run there, I think that was a very dead clad. Um, I don't know. It's always unclear, and there's so little knowledge of the map for Unitado. They have so little mm -hmm. uh, solid vision right now that there was no telling what would be waiting once the death realm ended. This is a this is a really interesting build coming out here from Unitado. I don't know how much I like it, especially given the problem that their team is having getting damage onto the back line. Like you have the ability to just ult a carry and one v one them out, but instead going for like a full tank uh, frontline build, which to be fair is a lot easier to execute on, and I think that may be the justification for it. Uh -oh. Yeah, Unitado hey, going down. May need There's to take some hits in the front line. A good route will land, and you've got Smart Little Pig going through into the back lines. Swiddle in trouble in the That's meantime. Bento. Flash over the wall from Bento to stay alive, but they've already got the gin assassinated at the very start of the fight. Swiddle will be 1v1 by Unitado. Successfully, but Unitado can't find the kill. Trying to stay alive in the midst of three players will eventually go down, but that means the fight is pretty much over and done with. There's no way back into this. Only Facade lives. Even behind the turret, they're struggling to stay alive. Will Kai back into turret now, but still fall. A double kill to Derpy Legend, and it will be a complete team wipe to Northview. With perfect timing, that means the Drake and the Baron are both going to be in Northview's pockets. Just no damage available in these team fights for the side of Lambert. And it really is showing why that Mordekaiser build is going to cause problems for them in the team fights they've been having. There's a real failure to find a way to isolate Raikou. And that is off the back of great positioning and great peel from Northview. But as a result, you're going to struggle without those damage bursts in the fight. And we saw exactly that. You know, Facade can find an ultimate, but there's no one to follow up with damage while that Ooh. ultimate is going. Smart little pig getting caught out there as well. There's combos like that. Already a double kill. Bento may be shut down here. Yes. Pagadar will get the gold. I don't know what you do from that, though. Uh, two quick kills. Both little pigs getting scooped up there. And a two for one cannot be framed positively, even with a two-for-one uh, in Baron as well. Northview are absolutely rolling. Boy, yeah, I mean, you look at you look at what Northview have picked up in the last few minutes. They found their way to Soul Point. Granted, it's a Cloud Soul, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. We've got this one. Uh, Bento Dox has got the two-item spike. Still hasn't finished the Archangel Staff, but as soon as that becomes the Seraph's Embrace, that's a huge power spike. And you have a 7, 1, and 3 Kled. I don't even know how that happened, TJ. That Kled was, like, doing fine in lane, and then stopped laning, and suddenly I look again, and it's 7 and 1. And that's terrifying. I think one of the other... Th oh, sorry, I'm distracted by the speed with which Kled is moving across the map. Hold, hold that thought. Um, I think one of the other things we have to address here is that Facade is having almost no impact in this mid-game. Facade mm -hmm. did pretty well during the early game, uh, but last game we saw the mid lane carry from Lambert kind of make all the difference. This game we still had a strong start to the bot lane, but 
there hasn't been a secondary carry. It is all on the Jin to win these team fights, to have enough damage, and that's simply not realistic. Especially for a Jin. I mean, if this were the other, if the shoe was on the other foot, Northview were like, okay, Raikou, you're the only one who can provide damage in this competition. Kind of fine. Uh, but in this case, alongside constantly getting picked at every opportunity for everyone on Lambert, uh, I think the lack of additional damage sources besides Smart Little Pig Senior is really showing. Yeah, I think we're definitely facing a composition problem in this black deck. Curtain call over the wall for the steal. Onslaught of Shadows does make things dangerous, but the Baron will go to Northview, and I don't see how this turns. Picadar does fall. Derpy Legend inside the Death Realm versus Totally Unitado. We'll lose out. Totally Unitado getting one kill over. That will be exactly how many kills they get as Facade is focused out. However, it is three kills for one. The Baron yet again in the hands of Northview. I think from here, in order for Northview to lose, they need to make a massive mistake. I think the control of this game has been wrested from the hands of Lambert for minutes now, but now it finally feels like there is no proactive play they could make that wins them this game. Straight off. They would need to find a miraculous team fight Ooh. and stop getting caught out like that. That would be my number one stop criticism. having the Glacial Prison cast on you. By yeah. Swiddle. It is a kind very of... specific failure. And yet. Yeah, and it that sounds almost like <laughs> just stop getting hit, lol. But it is really like this positioning thing where there's no vision around them and individual members, not the team as a whole, from Lambert are walking up into areas they have no vision on and they know that Swiddle could be around the corner. Who is level 17 on Sichuani, by the way. I haven't even noticed this until now. Swiddle is the highest level in the game on Sichuani. Yeah, Swiddle has like 100% kill participation in this game. Swiddle will be in the front line here again. Therapy Legend gets the kill, totally unitado. Down, this should be it. A double kill now over to Northview. As they accelerate forwards, Derpy takes a step too far forward and will delay the plans by a moment. This curtain call needs to be huge to save the day, and Swiddle just face tanks it. And so, smart little pig will give it up. I don't actually think they can end here. Mm. Respawns are too short. Waves coming in. We'll see. They had 25 seconds. I think they could have done it, but they're taking the safe way out and just going to rotate back towards that Drake, picking up the Cloud Soul, and then make one last push for the end. You know, we talked about how the Cloud Soul isn't that impactful. Uh, I'm seeing the ultimate speed boost or reaping dividends mm -hmm. for this team because of how often Glacial Prison is used. Yeah, that's kind of the, the three Cloud Drakes required to get the Cloud Soul. TP into the pit. Facade uh -oh. already on the front lines. They have a player advantage. Lambert could make something happen oh. here. Applesaurus Rex already down. Swiddle surrounded by three players. Four players won't go down. Swiddle escapes inside the Death Realm. The kill will go on to Totally Unitado. Swiddle Thank finally you. falls to the back lines. Ryaku doing so much damage. Onslaught of Shadows rips through the team fight as Picadar finally arrives. They are the only player left for Lambert in a 1v1. How does it work out? No HP. The kill confirmed. An ace and a heroic one to Lambert. Beautiful play there for Picadar, who just delayed until the very last second, came into the fight riding a majestic horse, and was able to find kill after kill after kill after kill. It was truly impressive coming out from behind like that. And finally, finally, Lambert have found a team fight win. And that is what they need to get back into this game. I do not know how repeatable that is, though. That, that came mm -hmm. off the fact there were there were so many elements to that. Uh, it came initially off the fact that half the players were still in base resetting. Uh, they moved to Lambert's credit. Lambert spotted an opportunity and executed on it. They moved way faster across the map than I think Northview thought they could. Uh, then Ryoko gets split up from anyone who can defend them and ends up way too far forward. And with the vein split in the fight and a disconnected Northview positioning, the fight is possible. But Lambert cannot count on that, and I do not know that they have made enough gold in that fight 
mm -hmm. uh, to win a fight without that. And I think that really is, you know, we were talking about earlier how Northview's way back into this game, or sorry, Lambert's way back into this game is not off the back of plays that Lambert makes proactively. I'm happy to say that I was wrong about that, but they are going to have to be able to find for their missteps from Northview. It's not enough for them to find a proactive play. It is now going to be up to, we need to find a way to catch Northview off guard once again. Yeah, you will notice that team fight win has been followed by a ruthless push down the side. Oh dear. And yet again, Glacial Prison just finds a free kill. There will be at least a response. The Collector doing good work there. Call the Forge God. Or sorry, Curtain Call deployed. Very Actually, different. huge damage comes as a response. The Onslaught of Shadows in the Raikou. front line. Rick Raikou barely surviving. Will be cut down again by the full focus from Facade, who absolutely is single target focusing right now. Is totally Unitata finds a kill. Swiddle's barely alive here. Hunted down by the other horsemen. Oh! Oh! Beautiful escape that saves over the wall. Him. moves mm. real fast. He does, but can you find where the Sejuani has gone? That's the question. It's a game of battleships. Swiddle not back to their base either way. That was a remarkable overstep there. Northview very much could have won that. They did so much damage to Smart Little Pink. Sort of back at full HP. That's more marks for you. Uh, they did so much damage to Smart Little Pig. If they had a reset after that Glacial Prison, they would have easily been able to take the inhibitor. But because mm -hmm. they overstretched to confirm the kill, well, they lost everything. Now, as a result, though, the Longhorns have set up on Baron. Right, this is their opportunity to find their way back into this game. This Baron, one way or another, will decide the fate of this game. That's why I really don't like them backing right now for Lambert, because there is the chance that Northview see this and then immediately gun for it, but that is not the case. So at the very least, that is not going to be the decision that makes or breaks the game. But it is, we are getting to the point where the next play is exactly that. I think the last couple of team fights have also been a testament to what has been missing from Facade. Uh, both team fights, Facade has found an opportunity to get a single target focus. It was Bento during the, the Weird River fight. It was mm -hmm. Ruku during the uh, turret dive fight. And because Facade is able to obliterate one of the carries over on Northview, all of a sudden it is a much more even playing field. I mean, looking at the items as well, I think Smart I Little Kid Pig is finally in a position to be able to do something, which is really nice because Smart Little Pig on this gin has not really been able to cut Twiddle the entire game. And while that is still mostly true, Lord Doms helps a little bit. Um, With the RFC on top of Collector Eclipse, you can now kind of just <laughs> poke over the top of Twiddle and fire down and really find access towards those midline backline champions depending on swiddle's positioning so with clever enough positioning from either of the smart little pigs we will oh, yeah. find access to the character let me smile little pigs it's drake time baby bear enough on the map as well this next drake will decide this soul which is possibly game winning probably game winning we'll keep our we eye on trade. it trade Baron for Soul. I think probably Soul's the winning trade there. Uh, for Unless you went off the Baron push. Yeah, so Northview... Ooh, I'm gonna hold this because Glacial Prison has just found a pick off again. However, Benjo is all alone! Oh my god! Benjo goes down! Start of the fight! That is the Cassiopeia already out of the fight. Facade will follow, but totally Unitano is already wreaking havoc in the back lines, and Lambert may have done it! Lambert may have snatched this game back from the brink of defeat! Not once, not twice, but three consecutive team fights. And now they can accelerate down the mid lane with the knowledge there is nobody back in this server for another 60 seconds. And indeed, there will be nobody to challenge their title as the state champions. Beautiful, beautiful games there by Lambert. The second one was a testament to their ability to adapt as a team. That was a really dire game.
for multiple minutes. That was like a full 10 minutes of me thinking, oh my God, there's no way Lambert comes back into in this at all. But the Lambert Longhorns, they pulled through, pulled through off three consecutive fights. As you said, they had frankly no right winning, but through beautiful play, beautiful team fighting, beautiful shot calling, and just ability to pull the trigger, they made their way through, will find themselves state champions. Georgia state title to Lambert Longhorns. Northview ending that game with a GG. If you're wondering why it froze, they did surrender preemptively, but there was no way their players would have respawned in time. So, mm -mm. no shame in it. A very, very good game, too. That was one of the more impressive game twos, more impressive comebacks, more impressive games we've had across the entire play versus season here. So I'm very, very impressed by both Lambert and Northview as that series comes to a close. Uh, if you're like, man, I'd like TJ to be impressed with me. Well, first of all, you have some validation issues. But second of all, you can sign up for that. Go ahead and enroll in our new season of the Flay vs. High School Championship. That has frozen. Uh, and you can start Flay on March 1st for our spring season. And find out more at playversus.com. We have a screen for this. Check it out.